Hello and welcome to another Flight Gear video. Today I want to show you how to land the Space Shuttle uh, on the Space Shuttle landing facility in Florida. So uh, you can choose um, when you when you select the the Space Shuttle among the airplanes, you can select in which sequence you want to start the, the flight. And I chose the short final option for the Space Shuttle. And I highly recommend that you use the start paused option so that you don't get caught uh, in the middle of the flight once the loading of the flight gear simulator is ended. So this is the picture you see. Uh, once flight gear has fully loaded and the location that I'm using you can see it in the map it is the shuttle landing facility at uh, Cape Canaveral in Florida and the location that I entered in the flight gear menu it was Kilo Tango Tango Sierra uh, the runway 33 this is in fact the real landing facility in Florida so it has an extra long uh, runway um, which is necessary for the high landing speeds of the space shuttle so and this is the situation that you find once uh, once flight gear is up and you need to be prepared to operate some of the instruments here especially the gear uh, it is not the standard gear configuration, not what you're used from other planes. So the gear first has to be armed. That's what you achieve with Control G, Control Golf. I will activate the HUD so that you can actually see what's going on. Um, I suggest for your first flight attempts that you also turn on the HUD with uh, with the H key with Hotel. So to here is what you have to pay attention to the gear um, if it is if the gear is still uh, up then uh, it will be written up and once you hit control G it goes from up to armed and when you hit shift G so an uppercase golf then finally the gear will be extended and once extended it cannot be retracted again you will get a warning that it can only be retracted by ground crew so this is the most important feature that you have to operate the gear and after landing after touchdown you should deploy the drag chute you can do this by using the mouse for example and first arming and then deploying it with these buttons and before you come to a standstill you have to jettison the drag chute but you can also deploy it with a key combination with uh, shift c with shift charlie you can deploy you can activate those two buttons at once the drag chute will be armed and deployed immediately but make sure that you that you jettison it before your uh, before your space shuttle comes to a standstill otherwise you will get a warning about the uh, uh, damage that you caused on your engines so let's get right into it and let's uh, look for the specialities of this runway because to, you have to aim for the so-called pre-flare point. There is a pre-flare maneuver that you have to execute and then the final flare to pitch up the nose to reduce speed. So I will show you those two points that you have to be aiming for. They will also be shown in the built-in HUD of the of the space shuttle so I will uh, I will uh, deactivate the pause with a P key and now we're flying so I pitch down the nose and there I don't only see the runway through this little window I also see my first aiming point this little circle here is my first aiming point where I have to start the pre pre flare and my first task is to match this crosshair with the first aiming point so I have to do some roll movement with the ailerons. Of course, I have no no uh, engines running. It's a glide. It's a total uh, glide approach. The main engines are just for operating for the start and for operating in space, but not for for helping me with landing. So down to two thousand feet, I have to just keep the crosshair on this first aiming point, and I will already arm the gear now you can see the this sign has switched from up to armed 
So now the gear is ready for deployment, but not yet. I will deploy it only on the last few meters before the runway, not to create too much drag and not to touch down too hard because of that. So this is something you have to postpone until the very last moment. 2000 FD arm gear. So now that we received the 2000 feet warning, I have to pitch up the nose. This is the pre-flare maneuver that we're doing. Still, the nose is pointing a little bit down. But now we're in pre-flare and I have to keep my fingers on shift and G for the gear to deploy it at last moment. Now comes the real flare to slow down and I deploy the gear. Touchdown. That was the touchdown. Now gently bring down the nose not to damage the front wheel. Gently, gently. Okay, and now with shift C we will deploy the drag chute and also use the wheel brakes. Use the rudder to keep on track, to keep uh, to keep your the nose of your space shuttle on the center line. And don't forget to jettison the, the chute before it's too late. Now we jettison it, we don't need it anymore, we are slow enough, we're perfectly on the center line. And in the end there will be a summary of your of your uh, touchdown maneuver will be shown to you. So our vertical speed at touchdown was three feet per second. That is pretty low. That's below the limits of the structural limits of the gear. So under real conditions, we wouldn't have uh, damaged the gear. Also, the front wheel is still okay. And we have a look at the at the shuttle from outside also it looks okay so i will deactivate the hud just uh, one more little tweak if you're not happy with the result of your touchdown or you just want to try again for fun just hit the retry button and you can try again and again and again so that's uh, th that's a very nice feature you don't need to use the reset option here because that takes a quite long reload time here the the retry is immediate you can do one approach after right after the other and if you uh, especially at the beginning when your touchdowns are still pretty hard i suggest that you use a little cheat that is in here uh, for the space shuttle you can uh, you can uh, reduce the the sensitivity of your of your airframe structure with limits and failures you can go to limit simulation i set it to soft the the default setting is realistic and you will see especially at your first attempts you will almost every time break the rear wheels you will break the gear and that makes the maneuverability very hard uh, then to bring down the nose wheel so i suggest that you start with the setting soft and that makes the whole structure much more robust and that gives you better chances of succeeding and having a smooth and gentle touchdown so we can uh, have another look at this landing attempt which was quite good for my standards from another angle we look at the instant replay as this is a, just a short sequence we will have another look so you see this is quite a steep um, nosedive that we're doing so we're picking up a lot of speed in the end so the the touchdown speed is very high it's something around uh, uh, the airspeed was 250 knots at touchdown so that's quite high but it's typical if you try to land a bus with those stubby wings here of course the the glide slope angle is steep and also the touchdown speed is high so that's not a surprise the air brakes here which are which are uh, integrated in the rudder they are operated automatically by the by the board computer so these you can see they are opening and closing to do a fine tuning of the of the speed and that's done automatically by the computer you can operate them manually as well the air brakes but for the uh, short final sequence you don't need to you can also leave it to the board computer so now let's have a look from the side how we fared we're now in pre-flare so nose is already pitching up 
and then when we're over the runway comes the real flare so we're flaring up now even more extending the gear in the very last moment it's not realistic what we're doing normally you would extend the gear earlier at 300 feet i extended it below 100 feet so it was something that a real um, shuttle pilot would never do he would extend the gear earlier and you can see the nose came down also quite gently we did not uh, we did not harm the front gear as well at least in my flight gear version you cannot actually see the drag chute when it's deployed you can feel the effect you can feel the drag but you cannot see it i did not uh, figure out how to make the drag chute visible in any of my settings so that's something that doesn't work but doesn't matter um, still the 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 breaking effect of the drag chute is there it helps so that's uh well we don't want to repeat that so as you can see that was a successful attempt uh three feet per second very low uh vertical speed at touchdown uh high airspeed we did not use the full roll distance so we still had plenty of distance on the runway left it was not at risk of overshooting the runway so this was the, the um, landing, my little landing tutorial for the space shuttle. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, see you next time for another flight gear video. Goodbye.